Welcome back, everyone, to Piney Plays the Alchemist. We are here in Winwood Hall, where we're about to meet with Sir Snowdrift, who is an emissary from the Prince of Frost, who is going to help us to find a certain Arc Fey that has been troubling us since we've gotten here at the Feywild. Hello there! Fine flask, my lamb. The Prince of Frost sent me here to shepherd you. He wishes to perform the favor you requested as soon as possible. I'm sure he's eager to leave these gauche summer court lands the instant he can. Do they really have to use all of these colors, I ask you? In any case, the prince awaits you near Duskfall Overlook. I suggest that you rendezvous with him post-haste. All right, and how do I get to Duskfall Overlook? Oh, ah, therein lies your problem, my lamb. Duskfall Overlook is up on a cliff across a ravine. That is why you need the help of my lord, the Prince of Frost. The prince is waiting to meet you at the closest approach to Duskfall Overlook. It's down the road and across the bridge. I believe that you have passed it when you first arrived at these lands, in fact. Now, on your way, the Prince of Frost is not known for his patience. All right, fine. I'll head over there, and you are right. He is definitely not known for for his patience. Ah yes, that looks like it'll be difficult to reach without some sort of help. Unless of course I learned how to fly. And look here it is, the Prince of Frost. Greetings mortal, I am prepared to repay your favor. If I understand you correctly, you wish to enter here some stronghold? Yes, I need to enter Duskfall Overlook, but it's across this chasm, and simple enough for an Arkfay, that is. Prince of Frost raises his hand, and ice materializes out of thin air. This forms a vast frozen staircase leading up to the stronghold. All right, fine. Let us go and climb the stairs. We have arrived, and all I have to do is convince Hearsome to hand over the Codex pages. Like, that's going to be easy. You arrive at Hearsome's stronghold after a long, long climb up the ice staircase. The Prince of Satyrs is near the entrance, playing a melody, while his servant Hermia flits nearby. Hmm. Ah, Hermia. Whom we met right as we started. Hearsome looks up. Not at all surprised to see you. Ah, here at last. I trust you didn't get frostbite. <laughs> Welcome to Duskfall Overlook. A prime example of my vision for the Feywild's future, as well as its past. See how the birds and the deer, the trees and the vines, have reclaimed the ruins of this Eladrin palace. Here we say goodbye to the useless conceits of the Aladdin courts, to the hole they have on our world. You seem impatient to start your duet. <laughs> Worry not, it will begin soon, but first, I hope to teach you about what I want to achieve. Once you complete the lessons I have designed, we will speak again, but until then. Pearson bows, then disappears. All right. You seem impatient to start <laughs> your duet with me. Okay. <laughs> oh, well. Looks like we're going to have some testing first. The owl remains motionless as you approach her. Her eyes blink open and close slowly, and as though she were thoroughly bored with your company. So, what are these... Lessons that Hersom mentioned. She turns her head first clockwise until it is nearly upside down, and then counterclockwise until it comes to rest in a similar position. Calling them lessons certainly is one way to put it, but it is the right way, or perhaps the left way. In any case, it is all a matter of perspective. Well, that sounds like Hermia, all right.
Uh, look, I have to get to the roof so I can talk to her some, face to face. What can you tell me about the lessons? Impatience is a matter of souring one's appetite. I suggest you settle your nerves so that you're ready for supper. Then again, contrary to popular belief, the best way to approach stomach-turning situations is often a hearty meal. Yes, a meal home cooked by Granny it will likely help you think about this and in a way from a hungry person wouldn't. Or perhaps I sometimes find that the best cure for impatience is a spot of music. Yes, you will certainly benefit from an uplifting tune. Although I doubt flying will do much to keep your feet on the ground, uh, perhaps falling would be the cure instead. Uh, what does anything have to do with Hersom's lessons? Oh, the owl emits a strange laugh-like squawk. Yeah! She turns her head clockwise, front to back, to front again. It is a matter of perspective, Pine Flask. Once you slow down to eat and listen to some good music, you'll be able to speak clearly. The door won't handle won't handle misspoken, misshapen, or otherwise miscellaneous turns of phrases. Yes, you must speak your mind, and you must tell the door what it wants to hear, without any off-key or starving additions. Hmm. Once you've satisfied your appetite and learned to gain a note, you know what to say. Uh, you slash say to speak the correct combination of watchwords in front of the rooftop door. So, I have to say something properly in order to get through. All right, all right. I guess that's what I have to do. Romeo says that before you can meet with Hirsum, you will need to find two watchwords hidden in the different branches of his stronghold. Speaking the watchwords to the rooftop door will unlock the way to Hirsum. A curious door glimmers into view. Even curiouser, it vanishes mere seconds after it appears. You decide to keep your eye out for it as you complete Hissom's lessons. Mm -hmm. Well, I must have missed that door. Well, let's go through this door then. So, is this for a meal? Or is this the Hall of Objects? I suppose we go inside. Now, is this to learn music? Or is this to learn eating? Or something else? All together. Dust boats drift through the air, while cobwebs choke the corners of this corridor. Yes. What about this door? Hearsome's voice floats in the air, coming from everywhere and nowhere at all. I have provided you with a feast for the senses. Once you and your fellows are ready, step up onto the table. But be aware. You'll be shut in until you've learned your lesson. Or you meet your demise. I don't know. I was just thinking of a scene from The Tempest where there is this grand table brought out and then Arya takes the form of a harpy and then scares away all the people inside of the place. So are we going to run to a harpy here? <laughs> now that you've climbed onto the massive banquet table, you must select an object from the curiosities laid out before you. We have a golden egg. A gourmet cake, a ripe apple, hmm. a little bit of musical instrument. Well, it looks like I have a choice between the egg and the cake and the apple. What does the apple do? Before you could, before you is a stack of plump gleaming red apples. I only see one. They seem to have been plucked straight from the branch of one of Feywild's perfect green trees. 
So I could choose the apple. Hmm. Let's see what happens when I do that. You sink your teeth into the apple. While you expect to get a mouthful of fruit, instead you taste paper. You pull a note out of your mouth. Read the note. I follow your nature. So I guess nature is one of the words? You're surprised to discover that a watchword has been hidden within this object. You hear a loud rumbling noise, which strangely reminds you of a yawn. The door slams open, and a Fomorian walks out into the chamber. Finally! Mori Ladron for supper! He shouts. Alright. Oh yeah, Formians don't like a Ladron, I'm pretty sure. The Fomorian stumbles, then falls. You collected a watchword and killed the hungry Fomorian. Now you are free to leave the Hall of Objects with a new understanding of Gearson's ideals. Yeah, I now understand their nature. Confectionary caster. <laughs> Let's see what else is in here before I head out. But now I see why everything is so large because it's an area for a Fomorian. Alright. There you go. And what's out this way? Probably... Probably deeper into the halls. And then on our way and... See what's here. Pull the lever! Goblins. More goblins. Dead goblins. Do I have to... Oh boy. Visions of Ravenloft. I know, I know, this character hasn't done Ravenloft yet. But I think that'll be soon. I'm getting pretty close to the right level for that. Well, Reveler Rowdy. Oh, and goblins, of course. Because, what's the world like without... Oh, hidden. Hmm, hidden. Oh. Alright, don't interrupt the search attempt. Ah, there we go. Actually, I actually saw something. Ooh, Well, let's try the hidden path first. I never know what's down here. Probably an optional. Look for the curious door. Well, I guess I have to find the... Or, or is that what we get when we go this way? Oh, this is the other end of the path, I guess. All right. Oh, I think we also have a lever there. That... Hmm. Well, that didn't achieve much, did it? Not sure. I suppose we'll take this side that looks a little different first. Okay, uh, deal with a couple of goblins here. We can't have you walking around away freely. Uh, are you sure about that? Huh. Well then, if you can't, then... I'll just have to deal with you. Hmm, this doesn't look good. In fact, it looks outright bad. I think I will avoid that direction. Try this way. Aha! Tricky, 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 tricky. So 
So there's an illusionist there putting on some invisibility spells, apparently. I don't know if that did anything or not, but all right. Uh, what's this way? Oh, searching all over the place. This place is a maze! Quite a maze. Hmm. Have I been this way before? Either way, looks like I've not been this way before. Two. Oh, is this the bottom of that way I saw before? Yeah, that's opened up. No, but this is new. Hmm. Or is it? Ah, I can't tell where anything. Well, obviously I've been here before. So, it's all strange. How about down one of these pads? Is it possible to get down here? Well, anything useful down here? Just a frog. Hold on. Carnivorous Kushi. Where they come from? Probably the result. Yeah, illusionist. Tell me, story! Are we done? Alright, that was. Uh, that was curious. Now, let's go through here. Hello! Uh, you, we'll take care of you. Take care of you. Now, the problem is everything looks the same, so it's hard to tell whether I've been here before or not. Oh, this is different. You hear the voice of a kindly old woman echoing from an adjoining room. Little Red, is that you? Come, come, dear. I've just finished baking another pie. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> oh. oh. After all those jokes I've been making about what big guys you have and stuff like that, and that might have been in another series, but Let's see what's this note? Little Red, as payment for our services, the Seder Prince has gifted us with this enchanted chest. Our treasure shall remain securely locked inside, lest we hold, lest we hold its rhythmic key. Love, Granny. As payment for our services, the Seder Grit has given us with this enchanted chest. Our treasures shall remain securely locked inside the chest, lest we hold its rhythmic key. Well, it has to do with music, right? It is locked. You can't unlock chest with that spell, so... Obviously, it has it needs a special key. Let's see what else we have. I, mean, I, assume, I assume at some point we'll find. As you open this door, an unsettling aroma floats towards you. Fresh pastry, but with an undercurrent of rotten meat. Why, you're not little red, says the voice. But don't worry, dear. Granny will take care of you. Granny falls to the ground, dead, with cookware clattering down around her. 
All right. Yeah. That was strange. Guess I should have expected a werewolf. Ooh, unholy mace. All right. I guess that'll do. Now, let's see if I can access that... other chest now. No. Can't open the chest. So I would have thought it would have had something to do with handling the werewolf, but apparently I was wrong. Will I find the curious door? Will I ever find out what is inside that chest? And will I be able to convince Hearsum to hand over the Codex pages? We have to find that out in the next episode of Piney Plays The Alchemist.